Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Mardu Greasefang, one of the top tier decks in the format which has been recently shaken up by the Winota and Tybalt's Trickery bands. And this is also basically a one-to-one -one port from Pioneer. The only card we don't have access to is Urborg in the mana base, which is no big deal. So we're playing at full power level here, and the game plan is quite simple. It's to reanimate some of our expensive vehicles from the graveyard, ideally Parhelion 2, a 5-5 vehicle with flying, first strike and vigilance. When it attacks, creates a pair of 4-4 angel tokens with flying and vigilance that are also attacking, and the crew cost is 4, and that's quite convenient, as Greasefang has 4 power and says at the beginning of combat on our turn, return target vehicle card from our graveyard to the battlefield, it gains haste and we have to pick it back up end of turn, so we can potentially hit the opponent for 13 and have two 4-4 four, four angels left over to finish the job. If we don't find Parhelion, we also have a one-off copy of Sky Sovereign, which is still quite powerful, dealing 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker when it enters a battlefield or attacks, so we can trigger it twice. Then, to help us discard Parhelion and Sky Sovereign, we have a few ways to do it. We could potentially mill them over with our Stitcher Supplier, mills three cards when it enters or dies, and we also have our Deadly Dispute to sacrifice it, which will draw two cards, make a treasure token, and then we also have a few blood tokens, which can maybe help us discard our vehicles between our four copies of Voldaren Epicure and four copies of Blood Tithe Harvester, which we can also use as removal, so also good in more mid rangey matchups, can also apply quite a bit of pressure as a three-powered creature. Then we also have our Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which can discard up to two cards on the second chapter. The Goblin Shaman makes treasure tokens, which is also quite synergistic in our deck. And Reflection of Kiki Jiki can also potentially win some more mid-range matchups. And then we also have some removal of our own, with two copies of Lightning Axe, which can also help us discard some of our vehicles as an additional cost, otherwise we have to pay 5. And also great in the mirror match at killing opposing copies of Greasefang, because we don't always have the option of enabling Revolt on Fatal Push, although we do have quite a few ways to do it in this deck, between our Treasure Tokens and Blood Tokens, which can also enable it at instant speed. And then we also have a few ways of getting back Greasefang from the graveyard in case it gets answered, or in case we mill it with our Stitcher Supplier, with our two copies of Can't Stay Away, can also be flashed back for 5 mana. And we also have one copy of Sorin, a Vengeful Bloodlord, which can minus to get back Greasefang, and also gives the team a lifelink. And then we also have one copy of Croxa, which is just a good mid-range card, especially in a deck with four copies of Stitcher Supplier. And then a mana base, quite straightforward, lots of dual lands and fast lands to make sure we can cast all our spells on curve. And the one copy of Abandoned Mire, which can also maybe get back a Grease Fang from our graveyard. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, there's certainly no shortage of Grease Fang. Problem is, we don't really have anything else going on. There's no vehicles to reanimate either. So, sadly, take a mulligan. Okay, this hand is a lot more balanced. And we have to make a tough choice here. Do we get rid of a spare Grease Fang in case one of them gets answered by maybe a discard spell or removal? Harvester is necessary to discard Parhelion, or we could get rid of a land hoping to draw another one. And yeah, maybe getting rid of the land makes sense here, since that's the most replaceable element. And we also get to draw an extra card with our blood token. Okay, so turn to Harvester. Opponent on some sort of Esper deck. Could be Control. Could be the Esper Parhelion deck as well. Okay, picked up another land. Excellent, so can attack. And then Deadly Disputes, maybe sacking the Blood Token to discard Parhelion as well. Can keep the Harvester for added pressure. So I don't have to Deadly Dispute, I can just sack the Blood Token and pass. Which seems fine. Fatal Push the draw. So if I Deadly Dispute, we have a treasure token left behind that I can use to Fatal Push an opposing Grease Fang. If our opponent goes like Faithful Mending, discard Parhelion into Grease Fang. So I could see the advantage of sacking the Harvester here. So 
So we'll go for a Grease Fang. That seemed to resolve pretty swiftly. And there's a Parhelion. Awesome. Clean turn for win. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand has pretty much all the elements we need. Can discard Parhelion to Lightning Axe. And then Stitcher Supplier might mill another vehicle as well, or some other cards we can replay out of the graveyard. There's one other Grease Fang. Not sure what our opponent is playing here. Turn one Mountain. Red Green, Scrap Heap Scrounger, so it looks like an aggro deck. And yeah, we've got a couple options, but just going Vantage Pass with a plan of Chumping, Scrounger, and then Sack Supplier to Deadly Dispute works, and then we can still Lightning Axe and the Grease Fang. And there's a Sky Sovereign we could also reanimate. So hopefully they tap out. And Fable does exactly that. So yeah, we get to bring back Parhelion here. And uh, kill probably the Shaman over Scrap Heap. So that's another advantage of Lightning Axe over Fatal Push, is using it as a discard outlet. And our opponent's gonna need something pretty special to come back from this. Down to 5 life, facing 2 4 4 angels and a 4 3 grease fang with a scrap heap that cannot block. And we still have some nice leftovers. And our opponent packs it in, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is quite promising, just missing a vehicle in our graveyard, which we can maybe put there with our stitcher supplier. And, uh,. There's an argument for playing Epicure first, since uh, next turn we can maybe Supplier plus Lightning Axe. So we can use the same red source twice. And Epicure also played in some of the red-black Sacrifice decks, so we don't necessarily give away which deck we're playing. Alright, double Supplier, and then... Just need to mill a vehicle, and there we go, Sky Sovereign will do. So, could play another Supplier, could keep up Lightning Axe. Probably fine to just play another Supplier. And the Parhelion milled as well, so our opponent will need some instant speed removal for Grease Fang to not get comboed here. Glittering Stockpile. Okay, taps for mana, and our opponent passes, well... Coast is clear. Play Grease Fang, get back, Parhelion. And it's just that easy. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand looks good. Missing a vehicle to reanimate. But we have a reasonable... Fair game plan of early Fatal Push, Harvester, Dispute can sacrifice our Blood Token as well. And see what we're up against. Fabled Passage sacrificed. Gets a Mountain. Put on to Red Black, maybe mid-range. With a Shambling Ghast, maybe Sacrifice as well. And a Witch's Oven. Okay. So, don't know if I want to expose Grease Fang to removal, but I guess now with Sorin we have a way of getting it back. So it's not as bad if it gets removed. And then we could trade Harvester for Shambling Ghast. That's fine by me, I suppose. Could also sacrifice it to a deadly dispute before it gets taken out by the minus one minus one. Bottom just takes it. 
Yeah, I guess we can play Grease Fang if we'd like. Just as a 4-3. And that will also require some attention from the opponents. Opponent could have claimed the Firstborn to steal our creature and then sack it to the oven. So that's a potential concern. Which was a reason to maybe hang on to Deadly Dispute so we can sack in response. But for now we're just gonna play out our creatures at some point, keep up Deadly Dispute. And keep digging for one of our vehicles. Opponent passes, missing their land drop. Okay. We'll move to combats. Could see Shambling Gas make a treasure now. If the opponent's light on mana. Blocks Grease Fang. Could see their own deadly disputes. Sure. And then, yeah, it's tempting to keep up my own deadly dispute in case of a uh, claim the firstborn. Or we can tap out for Sorin. Think we'll hang on to disputes. And then I can always sacrifice my blood token if they don't go for a steal effect. Right, thought he's gonna have a look, that happens. So now they can take Sorin if they'd like. Another Witch's Oven, only relevant if they also have Cauldron Familiar. And we'll dispute our blood token here. And then we could dispute again, sacking the treasure, especially now that we drew another copy. Seems acceptable. Croxa's not bad, our graveyard's getting pretty full already. So let's get in there first. Could also sacrifice Croxa to Deadly Dispute with Croxa still in play. Which is a pretty cute play. Yeah, don't hate that. So play Croxa. And then in full control, we can make this resolve first. So they don't have the information about another Deadly Dispute. Opponent discarding Cauldron Familiar, so they actually had one in hand, surprisingly. And there's Parhelion, perfect. So now we can discard it to our Blood Token, and then next turn we have the combo rolled up. And cast away it gets back Grease Fang in case they answer it. So, yeah, play Apicure. And if our opponent's plan is to survive by blocking with Familiar over and over again, we've got that covered. So our opponent's still missing a food token to bring back Cauldron Familiar and get that chain going. Currently five cards in graveyards, so very close to escaping Croxa. And we just want our opponent to tap out, so they cannot disrupt our Grease Fang, bringing back Parhelion. Three cards still in hand. Mayhem Devil is a good one. But we can kill it with Fatal Push. Probably should have sacrificed my treasure in response to Mayhem Devil. And float that black mana. So in response to this... We probably Fatal Push. And then I'm sure they can still kill our Grease Fang. We should still be fine. So, yeah, let's sack this. So we give our opponent one extra Mayhem Devil trigger, which we shouldn't have. So, Sacrifice Treasure. Triggers Mayhem Devil. And another one. Alright, so I think we successfully tapped our opponent out. 
So end of turn or next turn we can discard Parhelia into our blood token and can't stay away back, Grease Fang. Mayhem Devil sacrifice to Witches Oven. Kills Epic here. So a whole bunch of triggers on the stack. We get to escape Croxa as well if we'd like. They can bring back Cauldron Familiar one time by sacking the food token. I guess there's still a treasure token available, so if they have their own fatal push, they could still kill Grease Fang here. It's going to be a deadly dispute to go digging. Okay, so that brings back Familiar once again with that food token. Yeah, and then we're hoping for no fatal push. Although, they still need to answer Harvester on the boards and Croxa in the graveyard, so there's a lot of layers to this. So bring back Grease Fang. Discard Parhelion. And we'll see if they have a Fatal Push available. Move to Combats. There's Cauldron Familiar. Possible they have another Deadly Dispute, and they'll sack Familiar digging for Fatal Push, but they have to do it now. They cannot wait until we get a chance to attack and trigger Grease Fang. There's a Deadly Dispute. And doesn't look like they found Fatal Push. Alright, so we get to crew Parhelion and Smash. Cool, managed to beat a red black sacrifice, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, hand seems pretty decent. Some early interaction, and there's Parhelion right on cue. So, turn one we can play Epicure if we'd like, opponent on red white. Could be a Grease Fang deck as well for all we know, but we'll play Epicure and then next turn. We can enable Revolt on Fatal Push for what it's worth by sacking the Blood Token and set up turn 3 Grease Fang already. Opponent just Sky Colors, so it could be a more controlling deck. So I'm not sure if Grease Fang is necessarily gonna stick around turn 3. But I guess we'll play another Epicure. Increases our damage a little bit. As opposed to playing Harvester, so we can still sacrifice our Blood Token. Otherwise, Harvester could have increased our damage output even more. Opponent is going to be tapped out because of Expressive Iteration, so that's perfect. And there's not many 1-mana answers in Jeskai Colors at instant speed. They would pretty much need a Lightning Axe here. Opponent plays a blue source, so they might have a Bound spell, I suppose. But we're about to find out. Yeah, opponent is holding priority here, so possible they have an answer for Grease Fang. But they'll definitely need it. Yep, Fading Hope. Just a temporary answer. And uh, now with a backup Grease Fang, even if they kill one, we can still potentially get there. So now our opponent's aware that they need to hold up interaction for Grease Fang. Has to pass it back, and yeah, we can run it out there. And see which answer they're packing. Grease Fang triggers, that's surprising. Maybe a bounce spell for Parhelion. But still probably better to bounce Grease Fang itself. Prismari command to destroy it, fair enough. Well, next turn we can go again with Grease Fang, unless there's a Sweeper here. And if there is, we still have that covered as well. So we'll move to Combots. Opponent playing Soaring City implies they have another bounce effect at the very least. But I'm just gonna keep doing this. Also would have been reasonable to play another creature pre-combat to crew Parhelion, so Grease Fang can attack. Another Prismari command, fair enough. 
All right, so we'll hit for two and then add Harvester to the board. And then hopefully next turn we can finally connect. Don't think I need to play Apicure. We have enough pressure in play as is. All right, opponent's got seven mana here potentially, and Vadrock Apex of Thunder. So this is some sort of uh, mutate combo deck. Well, we have a Fatal Push, so that can answer Vadrock. And Harvester can take it out as well. So, yeah, we'll untap. And then maybe start by sacrificing Harvester. Um, opponent might have an Octopus they can mutate at instant speed, which is a reason to keep a black mana for Fatal Push. If they kill my Blood Token somehow, that could also be annoying. So I think the safest place probably play Epicure to get a third Blood Token so they cannot destroy one and prevent Harvester from being effective. And then now we'll activate Harvester, see what happens. And still have instant speed fatal push available. And uh opponent did not do anything. Do we want to play another harvester pre-combat for some reason? Now nah, we'll go for Fable if this doesn't work out. Alright, opponent's got to unsubstantiate to bounce it. That works. Hit for two. Feels like this game would have probably played out better if we just attacked with Grease Fang instead of trying to croup our Helium constantly. But uh, opponent's down to two cards and I think we still have all the angles covered. And I might want to keep up Fail Push just to be safe and then we can discard our Parhelion end of turn as well to the Blood Token. Yeah, I think the opponent's game plan involves Tons of mutate creatures eventually looping back some cards from the graveyard to set up some sort of infinite loop with uh, Lord Dracus as well, perhaps. But uh, they didn't manage to assemble it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has most of the combo pieces we need, but we are missing a few elements. No red mana, although as soon as we do Fable can discard Sky Sovereign to set up Grease Fang, and then Sorin gets it back as well. So I think there's enough reason to keep here, especially on the draw. I've got a good chance of drawing the red mana. Soul Scar Mage, something I would not mind Fatal pushing, although could also jump with Stitcher Supplier. I think we'll pass with Fatal Push instead. Opponent Red White. Potentially a Magecraft deck. And yeah, now we get to maybe punish this Ancestral Anger. Unless they've got a protection spell. Which it seems like they do. Find us one to make it indestructible. Fair enough. So that was a reason to kill Soul Scar Mage right away. Didn't really notice they were playing white as well. Okay, so we found a red mana, so that's perfect. So this turn Supplier, next turn Fable. And we milled the Parhelion so we can just go for Grease Fang right away. So our opponent will need to keep up some instant speed removal. Defiant Strike pumps Soul Scar Mage. Don't think I'm jumping since we already have a vehicle in the graveyard. And Soul Scar Mage is only hitting for three. We might need Supplier to protect Sorin. So. Alright, opponent's gonna give a trample, but now they're tapped out. So. Feel pretty good about this uh, Grease Fang winning us the game. Although you never know, opponent could have a couple more pump spells to cross the finish line, I suppose. So we'll keep Stitcher Supplier back on defense. Now we are missing a way of discarding Parhelion next turn. So don't have another vehicle to combine with Grease Fang. But eventually Fable could discard to set it up again, if the Angels don't get there already. Another Ancestral Anger. Yeah, Soulscar Mage is definitely getting blocked with all our creatures here, if possible. Reckless Rage. Kill Supplier. 
So if they can double Soul Scar Mage's power somehow. Ooh, Sejiri Shelter. Protection from White puts us to one. So one damage short of actually killing us. Yeah, they got very close. But not close enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is missing Grease Fang, but we have double Fable to dig for it. And uh, Stitcher Supplier could maybe mill it and then can't stay awake and maybe get it back as well. So, seems keepable enough. Another Parhelion milled. Let's see what we're up against. Black Red could be the mirror match. So, hit for one. And next turn, Fable. Yep, Harvester. Opponent playing Den of the Bugbear as well, so it could also be kind of more of a mid rangey Rakdos deck. Very much possible. Fatal Push kills our Shaman. Harvester attacks. Yeah, I'll take it for now. Got our own Fatal Push. Discard Parhelion plus Vantage. And then we have a couple options, but don't mind playing another Fable. And then do we keep up Fatal Push as a question. Yeah, it's probably fine. And then keep Abandon Mire, which can also maybe get back a Grease Fang if it gets answered. Or we can just play another Harvester. But, um, yeah, kind of liking getting a second Fable going. Synthesizer, so yeah, our opponent's more of a red-black sacrifice deck as opposed to a Grease Fang combo. Epicure. Yeah, we'll push the Harvester now. Another Den of the Bugbear, and another Fatal Push to answer our Shaman. Okay, so definitely discarding Sacred Foundry. Question is, do we discard Abandon Mire as well? I think so, since we really want to find a Grease Fang this turn while the opponent's tapped out. Did not quite, but Double Harvester is still pretty decent. Will help us play a pretty grindy game. And then Supplier gets to attack. Although now if we mill Grease Fang, it's not going to be as amazing unless we also mill Can't Stay Away. Alright, so far so good. And then I don't think we need to play around a Sweeper. Reflection of Kiki Jiki also very good with Harvester, but Anvil, a scary card. That's pretty difficult for us to kind of uh, go over the top unless we assemble our combo. So now our kind of fair creature mid-range plan is not looking as appealing. So now what's our plan? Could maybe start with discarding a land to a blood token and see what else we pick up. Lightning Axe could do it once again, but then we won't have the mana to play Grease Fang, so it's less appealing. So could copy a Harvester now, so we don't play into another instant speed removal spell potentially. Sure. And then attack with probably everyone. Opponent's double blocks. That happens. And we'll pass it back. I suppose another play we had available was Copy Reflection with Reflection to use up all our mana. Wanted to keep up at least one Fatal Push for Den of the Bugbear. Croxa making us discards. Goodbye Lightning Axe. And our opponent's able to escape next turn. Although we can Fatal Push it at least. All 
All right, so now I think we'll keep up the reflections. Now our opponent's mostly empty-handed. Want to keep Fatal Push for Croxa. And a Stitcher Supplier we could play, but maybe it's better to just activate Reflection a little bit more. Yeah, we can attack with Harvester. And I suppose one Reflection. And then we'll just pass. Right, opponent had the Voltage Surge left over. So in that case, I guess we activate Reflection now. Copying Reflection. And then I can use this one at the beginning of the opponent's next end step to still maybe combo off a little bit. So I think that works out. Although only have two mana if we also want a Fatal Push, although I guess we can save Fatal Push until next turn. And just discard Supplier here. Alright, so Croxa happens, discard Supplier. And Anvil can make another 1-1. One, one. Okay, and then in response to that, activate Reflection, copying Reflection. And do this song and dance a few times. Just so we can untap with a couple reflections. And yeah, opponent throws in the towel since he'll get attacked by a pretty large squad. Not sure if it was quite enough for lethal, but especially once we fatal push Croxa, I think we're in great shape. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And our hand is missing black mana, importantly. So, can we still keep? I don't think we can. On the draw, maybe. We do have Fable to eventually smooth out our hand. But we also need a third land, so it feels a little too sketchy. Okay, this hand seems to have all the pieces we need. And then, do we even need Stitcher Supplier? I don't think so. And make sure we can cast Harvester, although... We may be missing the white mana for Greasefang then. Definitely want red mana for both Harvester and Fable. So I guess we'll start there. And then hopefully draw another lane next turn so we can keep Pathway on white. Opponent with her own supplier, so it could be the mirror match. And yeah, they milled Greasefang. Lightning Axe, at least an answer to an opposing Greasefang if that shows up. Can also discard Parhelion. But the Blood Token can do a similar job. Undead Butler, some versions playing this one as well. Mills another Grease Fang. So they're just missing a vehicle now. And Supplier attacks. Well, we could block if they mill a vehicle, what happens? We Lightning Axe, Grease Fang if they play it or reanimate it. But I can also just take one, not that it really matters here. Alright, found a deadly dispute. Could play it main phase to try and hit our land drop. And then maybe sacrifice our blood token since we have Lightning Axe as a discard outlet. Sure, could also sacrifice Harvester. If we attack, opponent can jump with Butler to get back Grease Fang, which is maybe a situation we want to avoid. So at that point, sacking Harvester could also be reasonable. But. Yeah, don't think we need the blood token now. Alright, found our land, perfect. And then... Yeah, don't really hate attacking with Harvester now. If they play Grease Fang, they still need a vehicle... ...for it to do anything. Which they're currently missing. And then we've got Lightning Axe to deal with Grease Fang anyway. So now Thoughtseize would be the main concern, I suppose. Opponent does not see a vehicle in our graveyard. But we can put it there at instant speed. Supplier stays back. 
So your opponent's not gonna tap out here. Okay, so I could Lightning Axe, but um, there is a risk of opposing interaction. Although it has to be pretty much an opposing Lightning Axe to kill Grease Fang. Fatal Push only works if they can Deadly Dispute first. So that does narrow down the number of answers our opponent could have. Although then again, if we want to discard Parhelion, we would need to Lightning Axe in the first place to discard it. I guess I could kill my own Harvester. Alternatively, we can just develop Fable of the Mirror Breaker, maybe get that Fatal Pushed, and then we still have Lightning Axe available. So, yeah, maybe we prefer our opponent tapping out for their own Grease Fang. Attack with Harvester, they jump with Supplier, maybe milling a vehicle, and then they'll feel comfortable going for their own Grease Fang, which we can punish. So, let's start by attacking. Opponent chumps, let's see if they have a deadly dispute as well. They don't. So yeah, unless they have Lightning Axe, going for the line I mentioned could have worked out. So, Fable, and then no need to play Godless Shrine untapped. Okay, pass it back. Fatal Push would also answer Grease Fang thanks to the treasure enabling Revolt. Opponent did not mill any vehicles, plays their own Fable. So now they can only have Fatal Push as an answer without a way to enable Revolt. And they're just going to push our token. Alright, so coast is clear to go for it, and we don't even have to Lightning Axe since we can just discard Sparhelion to Fable. A backup Grease Fang. So yeah, we get to live the dream here, which is discarding Parhelion, playing Grease Fang, and keeping up our own interaction. So there's no way for the opponent to combo on the way back. And yeah, that's going to be game too much for the opponent to overcome. So yeah, needed to kind of wait for the opponent to tap out to safely go for it, but we definitely were ahead otherwise. So yeah, this Mardu Grease Fang deck seems to be the real deal, and possible they were better off banning one of the cards out of the Parhelion deck as opposed to banning Trickery and Winota, although I know those decks are quite controversial and not particularly fun to play against either. So we'll see how the Explorer metagame develops, but for now Mardu Grease Fang certainly one of the top tier decks in the format. So I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.